Have you ever tried to set up a VPN on all of your home network devices, but you just can't get it working? Well, in this video, I'll show you how you can do that in one foul swoop. Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Orist, and in this episode, we'll be setting up a VPN on a router. First, let's answer the question. What is a VPN? Well, a VPN is a virtual private network that allows you to tunnel your internet connection out through a VPN server. How does this work? Well, let's draw it out together. Let's take a quick look and see how a VPN works on a router. We're gonna go through two scenarios in this example. One being a normal scenario and two being the VPN scenario. In the normal scenario, your client laptop will send a connection to the router. Your router will then send that connection to the ISP or internet service provider. Your ISP then will send that connection to its internet destination. The internet destination will then respond and the connection will take the same path that it took to get there. Now with the VPN scenario, it's slightly different. First, your client laptop will make a connection to the router just as before. The router will then encrypt that connection and send it to the ISP. The ISP will then forward that connection to the VPN server. The VPN server will then terminate that VPN connection and decrypt it, sending that connection to its internet destination. The internet destination will then respond back. The VPN server will then encrypt that connection and send it to the ISP. The ISP will then forward that connection back to the router. The router will then terminate that VPN connection, decrypt it, and send it back to the client laptop. Now, as you can see what I've circled, this effectively here is a tunnel where all the data in the connection is encrypted. Where the data in this connection is now unreadable by your ISP. Therefore, it looks like your internet is coming out from the VPN server and not coming from your ISP. VPNs have quite a few benefits. They allow you to hide your internet traffic from your ISP, including internet traffic from those IoT devices. They also allow you to bypass ISP restrictions. Lastly, they allow you to get access to different types of content. These benefits are very similar to proxy servers, where I just made a video on that. So if you're interested, go ahead and check it out. Now there are a few drawbacks to VPNs. VPNs can break your streaming services like Netflix or Hulu, where they detect you're on a VPN and they block you from streaming content. With a VPN, you can also lose your internet connection if you happen to not be connected to the VPN server anymore. Say you didn't pay the VPN bill. And lastly, you might not want to tunnel everything through a VPN connection. While this is configurable, it does require some effort. And if you're interested, go ahead and drop me a comment below and we could talk about how to do that. For this demonstration, you'll need the following. One is an OpenWRT router. I'll be using my Netgear R6080. Two is a VPN software. And in my case, I'll be using WireGuard. And three, is a WireGuard configuration file from a VPN provider. And in my case, I'll be using Molvad as my VPN provider. Let's go ahead and set up a VPN on a router. For this demonstration, I'll be using a base install of OpenWRT with the Lucy app installed and with a wireless network configured. If you haven't upgraded your router to OpenWRT yet, I'd recommend checking out my prior video where I show you how to do that. Now to get started, I'm gonna log in to my admin interface at 192.168.1.1. Now that I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and log in with my password. Next, we're going to check what our kernel version is. As you can see, mine is at 5.4. If yours is below that, you're gonna to need to perform an upgrade of OpenWRT. Now, if you're using a rolling release, this should be fairly easy. But if you're using a snapshot release like I am, you'll have to do a few more things. While I did cover this in my prior video to upgrading to OpenWRT, I'll briefly show you how to do this here. First, we're gonna to go to the system and then click backup and flash firmware. In this section, we'll first click the configuration tab, and here you'll want to put any files that you want to save in an archive. You could click open list here to see what the default files to be backed up are and any files that you've added. We'll click dismiss, and then at the bottom, once you've done adding your files, you could go ahead and click save. Next, we're gonna to go to the Actions tab, and here we'll generate an archive. You can save this archive and use it to restore from when you've done the flash. 
Lastly, here we can click Flash New Image, and you will obtain this image from OpenWRT's website, and it will notably be called sysupgrade.bin. I'll browse to my file, check this file out, and see it says sysupgrade.bin. Click Open, click Upload, and then to perform the upgrade, I'll go ahead and click Continue. And we'll want to make sure we keep all the settings and retain the current configuration. Now, assuming you've done all that, we can begin installing WireGuard VPN software. First, we're going to go to our system and then click Software. First, we'll want to be sure we update the packages available to OpenWRT. We can do that by clicking Update Lists. Now that we've seen it's complete, we can go ahead and dismiss it. Then in our filter, we can go ahead and type in WireGuard. As you can see, many options show up, but for us, all we'll be concerned about is installing lucy-app-wireguard. When we install this, it'll install all the dependencies that we need in order to configure WireGuard. Then we'll click Install, click Install again, and wait for OpenWRT to install WireGuard. Looks like it completed successfully. We'll go ahead and dismiss this, and then we'll perform a reboot of the router. We can do this under System, Reboot, and then click Perform Reboot. Now that the reboot's complete, we'll go ahead and click Lua Configuration Interface, where we can then log in once more. Now that we've logged in, we can begin configuring our WireGuard interface. We can do so by clicking Network, and then going to Interfaces. Then we'll click Add New Interface at the bottom. We'll give this interface a name of WG0. For the protocol, we'll choose WireGuard VPN. Then we'll click Create Interface. Next, in this section, have your WireGuard configuration file that you've obtained from your VPN provider ready. Here, I'll be using this to configure the WireGuard interface. So for the private key, I'm going to go ahead and copy this value here and paste it into my private key section. Then I'll add the IP addresses that they provided for IPv4 and IPv6. Next, we'll move on to the Advanced tab. Then we'll uncheck Use DNS Servers Advertised by Peer. And then we'll add the DNS server provided by WireGuard. Next, in our Firewall settings, we're going to create a new firewall zone called VPN. Then in the Peers tab, we're going to go ahead and add the peer. For the description, I'm going to go ahead and call this Belgrade, since that's where my VPN connection comes out of. For the public key, I'll go ahead and refer to the file. For allowed IPs, I'm going to refer to the file as well, and they'll provide us with the default IPs that allow us to route all of our traffic through the VPN. Next, we'll want to check off route allowed IPs. Then for our endpoint host, we'll use the IP address they provided. And we'll do the same thing for the port. Now that we've done all that, we'll go ahead and click Save. One more thing before I do that, you can use a persistent keep alive if that's necessary for you if you're behind the NAT. However, in my case, I do not need to do that. Now let's go ahead and click Save. Next, I'm going to edit the WAN interface so that it uses the DNS server also provided by Mulvad. We want to use this so that we prevent DNS leaking. Here, we'll go ahead and click Edit, Advanced Settings, Uncheck DNS servers advertised by peer. We'll go ahead and copy that DNS server again and paste it into this section. Then we'll click Save. Now that we've done those two things, we're going to go ahead and configure the zone that we just added. Into Network, we're going to go ahead and click Firewall at the bottom. Then within here, we want to do two things. We want the VPN zone to look exactly like the WAN zone. So first for the input, we're going to change this from accept to reject. Then we're going to check off the masquerading checkbox. What this enables here is to change the IP address to the gateway IP address for any traffic that leaves through this VPN zone. Now that we've done this, we'll go ahead and click Save. Now we want to edit the first zone forwarding from LAN to WAN. Here, we're going to change Allowed Forward to Destination Zones and click the VPN zone as well. Then we'll go ahead and click Save. Next, we're going to return to the Network and Interfaces section. 
Then within here, I'm going to configure gateway metrics. This is entirely optional. However, I would recommend it. And what this allows you to do is to go through the WAN zone or directly to your ISP if you shut off the VPN interface. You may shut off the VPN interface because you don't want to pay for the VPN anymore or you accidentally missed a bill or any of that nature. This will automatically change the internet connection to go out through the WAN zone. However, if this is not within your needs, then you can skip this step. First, we're going to edit our WireGuard interface then in advanced settings, we're going to go to use gateway metric. Here we're going to put the number of 10. Then we'll click save. Next, we'll edit the WAN interface. We'll go to the advanced settings as well. Go to use gateway metric and set this to 20. Then we'll go ahead and click save. All the gateway metrics defined is the cost of a route or the priority. So the lower the number, the higher the priority. So when you have a gateway metric of 10 on the WireGuard interface, all the traffic will be routed there first. Then, since the WAN interface has a lower priority, if the WireGuard interface is off, all the internet traffic will then go through the WAN interface. Now, if you want this process to happen automatically, or what we'd refer to as automatic failover, where internet connection through the VPN isn't working, and you want it to automatically go through the internet connection with your ISP, well, you can install a package called MWAN3 to do that. I won't be going over that in this video, but if you'd like to learn more, go ahead and drop me a comment in the comment section below. Now that we've done all these changes, let's go ahead and click Save and Apply. Now with these changes taking effect, all we can do is look at the WireGuard interface and see that the transmitted packets and the received packets have numbers in them. That indicates to us that this VPN is now working. We could also check another page to see the status of our VPN connection. In status, under WireGuard, we'll see that in our peer Belgrade that we have a latest handshake that happened 38 seconds ago. So this is another indication telling us that we're connected to the VPN server through our router. We could also do another check with our VPN provider. Here in the browser, I'm going to go and type in the following, molved.net forward slash check. And as you can see, all these boxes light up green. So we know we're using molved.vpn and we have no DNS leaks. And that's because of that DNS change we did on our WAN interface before. We could also Google our IP address and see what it is. This should roughly reflect the IP address of the endpoint server that we have in our configuration. And as you can see, it's 152.89.160.189. And in our configuration file, the endpoint IP is 152.89.160.178. So they're fairly close. Now that we've done this verification, let's go back to our interfaces tab in OpenWRT and do some troubleshooting steps. So if you set up those gateway metrics earlier and the internet connection isn't working through the WireGuard VPN, you can go ahead and stop this WireGuard interface. Once you do that, the internet connection will start going through the WAN interface. Now that this has stopped, let's go ahead and check what my IP address is once more. As you can see, this IP address has changed, and so we can confidently see that our internet is going back through our ISP. Now to restore internet connection through our VPN, all we have to do is go back to the OpenWRT Network Interfaces section and restart the WireGuard VPN interface. Let's try that out right now. So as you can see, the connection is up again. And if we give it a few seconds, we'll see that we're getting packets and we're sending packets. There we have it. Now we can also check status and click on WireGuard. And we can see that this handshake happened again. So another good indication. We can lastly refresh our molded.net check and see that the boxes light up green again. Lastly, we can check our IP address and see that it is fairly similar to the IP address of our endpoint server. All of this giving us confidence that we're going through the VPN. And that about covers it for setting up your router with a VPN. As you can see, there are many options that you can configure with a VPN on a router. I thank you for following me in my journey. I really appreciate it. If you like this video and got some value out of it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content and other content around IT tools and technologies, networking, security, and more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click that bell for notifications so you don't miss the next video. If you have any questions, go ahead and let me know in the comments section below. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.